It's the end of the world as we know it, and I feel fine. We're back to the zombie apocalypse keeper shelf. If this is your first time on my channel, I'm Elizabeth, and I'm not buying books this year. This is the second part of a series that I've done on my zombie apocalypse keeper shelf. And the reason I call it that is that um, I think it's unlikely that I'm going to be stranded on a desert island with a pile of paperbacks. However, if I'm ever involved in a situation where the power goes out and I'm not going to be able to charge my e-reader or my phone, I want paperbacks! <laughs> So these are the actual physical books that I bought and keep, even if I originally read something in ebook, something that I loved in ebook, that I um, keep for emergencies. The previous video I did on this topic, um, that covered the contemporary romances and the paranormal urban fantasy type romances. Um, this this video is going to be specifically for the historical romances. Um, I started out mostly as a historical romance reader. When I was around 15 I picked up a Julie Garwood book and started reading about Highland Barbarians and never really looked back. I read a lot of historical romance. Um, and then when I came back to romance just a few years ago, um, actually, not to get too political or anything, but during the last government, last long government shutdown about four years ago, um, I um, I went back to uh, historical romance. I read a lot of Mary Baylog, for example, because the um, library had a ton of her books, um, and then um, d uncovered other people that I'd missed or books that I'd read and remembered and loved and reread. Um, and these are the ones that, for me at least, have stood the test of time, sometimes years, sometimes just a few years, but these are my absolute historical romance favorites. So, we're going to start with Gentle Rogue by Joanna Lindsay. Um, this is actually the third book in the um, Mallory series. Um, and the first two, well the first one is fine. <laughs> um, it, it's a perfectly acceptable book. The second one is a little bit better, um, but features a couple of Scottish characters that get the awklassy kind of thing going on, um, and I, I find that rhetorical device irritating. Um, so really the, the first Joanna Lindsay that I read that I absolutely adored was Gentle Rogue. Um, the premise of the story is um, the heroine stows away on the former pirate, current aristocrat's ship as he's traversing the Atlantic, um, and um, their relationship develops in ways that you would probably expect if you've ever read any Joanna Lindsay. Um, the heroine is, is, is sassy, and the hero is overbearing and difficult, and um, it's just emblematic of the kinds of things the less problematic kinds of things that I loved it as a teenager. Um, I don't actually think I ever read this book back then, but um, I, when I did finally read it, I experienced a lot of the same joy in that sort of old, older school historical romance that I felt in the mid-90s when I first discovered romance. Um, the next book, and this is really more of a series again, um, you can see I have my, my little um, page flags because I frequently consult these for um, reviews and and just general um, gorgeous writing type um, things. This is The Spy Master's Lady by Joanna Bourne. Um, and I discovered Joanna Bourne just really a few years ago and I've been sort of rationing out her books because the, there's really just that one series and um, sh there it's complete and she's done and she's not writing anymore. So, um, I mean, she's still writing, but she's writing some different things, I think. Um, and these are set during the French Revolution um, and, and Napoleonic Wars. And um, so they span a fair period of time. Um, the reason that I like these is that they are very, very grounded in their time and place. Um, I think that the, it, it, it tends to be sort of a romantic adventure, romantic suspense type historical plots. Um, and the the heroes and heroines are typically both spies in one way or another. Um, and there's just something about them that because they are so grounded in that historical period that they just they suck me into their world and I can't 
think about or comprehend anything else when I'm reading them. So they're just, they've got such a strong sense of time and place that um, that I think they're, they're worth anyone who, who's interested in reading historical. I mean, unlike, um, you know, some of the Regency slash Victorian slash medieval slash Edwardian slash whatever we are sort of um, ballrooms and gaming hells type romances. Not that there's anything wrong with those, but not all of them are, are truly, um, you couldn't, point to them and say, oh, that's how life was like. With these, you can really point to it and say, oh, that's how life was like in the Napoleonic Wars. Got it. <laughs> um, they're really good. Um, the next book, um, this is one of the ones that I had to rescue from my husband. Um, this is Thief of Shadows by Elizabeth Hoyt. Um, this book is about, this is part of the Maiden Lane series, it's um, book number four. Um, I <laughs> I have had some debates online about whether or not you can read these out of order. Um, I personally read them in order, and the reason that I would recommend that is that this book, um, book four, features a bit of a reveal of something that you're very, very curious about over the course of the first three books, um, and I think it means more if you have read the first three books, when you get to this one and you find out um, the reveal, uh, I think I think it does. I think it does impact your enjoyment. Now, could you read it as a standalone? I think you probably could. Um, I think um, the the premise of the story is um, the um, the hero. Um, I don't want to say owns, that's the wrong word, runs an orphanage. Um, and the heroine is part of a sort of charitable group that supports the orphanage. Um, the hero is a virgin, the heroine is a widow. Um, that's a dynamic that I really enjoy where the, the woman is sort of the tutor um, in all things, you know, love. Um, and there are some really fabulous scenes. Um, I sometimes wonder what I should say on my channel about these things, but um, I, I there um, this has the best oral love scene in any book ever. I'll just leave it at that. Pick it up. Um, the next book is Lord of Scoundrels by Loretta Chase. Um, I actually got a chance to meet and chat with Loretta Chase at last year's um, Northeast Regional RWA conference, and I got this one um, signed. <laughs> See. Um, and so that's part of why this is on my keeper shelf, because I, I wanted to, to get something signed by her. But um, the other reason is that this is really a romance classic. Um, this is one of those books where um, the, I think a knowledge of romance really helps, because it's subversive um, to certain romance tropes in ways that I'm not sure people would understand if they hadn't already read some historical romance. Um, so the hero is a rake, and the heroine is is actually I wouldn't I wouldn't really call her any kind of an ingenue, <laughs> um, but um, but but they they of course clash in some interesting ways, and she eventually shoots him. Um, that that's a kind of a controversial point in the book. Um, I don't think it's a surprise to anyone because he's really kind of a jerk um, and needs to be shot. But um, but I think um, if you uh, if you need a barometer for um, for romances, I think I think Lord of Scoundrels provides a pretty good barometer. Um, the next two are by the same author, um, and I specifically um, well I'll show you this one. It has a it still has the price tag on from the used bookstore where I bought it. Um, this is Flowers from the Storm by Laura Kinsale. Um, this is another book like Lord of Scoundrels, I think, that is part of the historical romance canon. Um, it's um, the heroine is a Quaker. Um, the hero is an aristocrat. He suffers a stroke in the first few pages of the book um, and ends up um, in the heroine's orbit as sort of a, a patient, um, I think as actually as a mental patient, um, as a result of them not really understanding what any of that meant um, when I think that's I think it's actually Regency, um, but um, the. Heroine is fairly young and naive. The hero is experienced and not, but of course he has this this impairment um, that makes it difficult for him to speak and move and and do all sorts of things. And so they um, and, and there are all sorts of complications surrounding that and his inheritance and his title. Um, and and it was just it's such an interesting book and it's such an interestingly written book that I, I often will um, give this one to um, 
new romance readers who are perhaps more uh, have more literary tastes and would appreciate sort of the use of um, language and and um, I, I guess dialect that um, that Kinsale uses in this book. Um, the next one is my very favorite book, maybe ever. There's another one that I actually I, I have in um, in paperback, and I'll talk about that one last, but I can't find it. I, it's around somewhere. I just have to dig it out. Um, this is Prince of Midnight by Laura Kinsale. Um, in this book, this is the quintessential difficult heroine. Um, the heroine's family has been murdered by a cult. The hero is a Zorro-like, um, swashbuckling, um, I don't I, I, imagine the pirate Wesley, um, but with gorgeous flowing Fabio like hair. Um, and in fact, I specifically have this cop this I had a different a different copy of this book. and I have this one because I saw it on a shelf and had to get the Fabio cover. Um, so this as you can imagine, this one's um, on the older side. I think it's nineteen ninety. It also won the Rita. Um, the, um, the thing that I love best about Laura Kinsale and th that I love about both this book and about Flowers of the Storm is that she tears down a hero like nobody's business. I want to hear, uh, the, seeing a hero hit absolute rock bottom and be forced to accept that he can't control his world, um, is basically the, my most favorite thing ever. <laughs> and remains my most favorite thing ever. I think, in fact, a couple of videos ago I talked about um, Damaged Goods by Ainsley Payton, and that's kind of one of the things that I liked about that book, too. Um, that um, they they just, they have to give up in so many ways, um, and um, and and to some degree give, give it up to the heroine. So, um, I'm doing a terrible job of explaining how wonderful this book is. At some point I will um, talk to Laura and see if I can get permission to maybe read just a little snippet of it because there's a section of this book that would explain a lot about why I um, why I love <laughs> I love this book. In the meantime though um, it is available in audio. Nicholas Bolton is the marvelous narrator. He's probably the best narrator in the business as far as I'm concerned um, and he does a he does a tremendous job with this book. So um, Prince of Midnight by Laura Kinsale, narrated by Nicholas Bolton. Highly recommend you check that out. The next book, the second to last book, is Sweet Disorder by Rose Lerner. Um, this is part of the Lively St. Lemiston series. It's another Regency. Um, and Rose Lerner is another one of those authors who truly grounds her books in the history of the period. So um, Sweet Disorder takes place while the hero, aristocratic hero's brother, is running for um, political office. Um, and his family would like him to make a politically advantageous marriage with a widow um, who had actually been happily married, but is is done with that. She's happy being on her own. Um, and the two of them sort of figuring out how to cope with one another. Um, I think probably the thing I like best about this is um, the heroine's unapologetic efforts to ask for what she wants in every way. Um, and I think Lerner is particularly good at this. I like, as I said, the, the grounding um, in the historical period. And this is one that I have gone back to several times when I have wanted something completely immersive, emblematic of another time. Um, the last book, and I'm going to have to put the cover up here because I, I can't find it. I, I know I have it. Um, this is Nighthawk by Beverly Jenkins. Um, Nighthawk in some ways reminds me a lot of Prince of Midnight. The two heroines are quite different, but they are difficult in their own special ways. The heroine of um, uh, Prince of Midnight, as I, I would say, is, is grieving, bitter, hurt, um, missing her family. The heroine of Nighthawk um, is, um, has been really alone for most of her life. Um, her parents passed away and she has been sort of making her way in the world however she can for some time. Um, and um, she, <laughs> the, the heroine of Nighthawk is a chaos magnet. She gets into situations that are completely not of her own making, but she just, she, she is unwilling to put up with people taking advantage of her 
and because she is a black woman um, in a lower class situation, um, people don't appreciate that um, and and try to put her in her place and she won't have it. And I love that. <laughs> um, she is absolutely vibrant, delightful. Um, she's so fun. Um, in some ways, um, she is a princess in need of rescue. Um, but because she is such a strong character in her own right, um, I don't mind. Um, and the hero, uh, as I said, is similar to, to the hero in Prince of Midnight in that um, he's, he, <laughs> I wouldn't exactly call him swashbuckling. He is a bounty hunter known as the Preacher. And <laughs> in like Samuel L. Jackson fashion, he quotes scripture at the people who he's picking up the sort of baddies that he has warrants for. Um, and um, it's, it's a very, he's a very charismatic character. Um, and he's got some swagger that is um, really undeniable and uh, irresistible. And um, the two of them together, the sort of semi-straight laced um, lawman and the chaos magnet, they are, um, probably one of my very favorite pairings in romance. So I I would say that one, Nighthawk by Beverly Jenkins and Prince of Midnight by Laura Kinsale for two very different reasons, very different, um, very, very different books. They've got very different tones. Um, I, those are, those might be tied neck and neck for my favorite romance ever. Um, so those are the historical romances on my zombie apocalypse keeper shelf. I hope you've enjoyed these videos. Um, as I said before, if you missed the first one with the contemporaries and paranormals, you, I'll go ahead and stick that up in the cards right now. Um, and um, have a good week. Doubt not, slay some words, and Lex has your back.